So we're going to talk about some, uh, some of the recommended uh, problems in the textbook. Um, they make us, uh, yeah, they, they make us uh, kind of like the journey for my homework. That's, 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 that's a lot of words. That's yeah. like way too long. Yeah. I don't think they'll do it. <laughs> I don't think in so. what? The metro? So we have the original uh, oh yeah I mean I think we're gonna give us a little bit five weeks no I just give up honestly I have a lot to do yeah, I mean that's true uh, is so it, it, like, I took two hours, hours and I had like I did six or seven times right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what can we start um Zoom people, if you have a question, please use your mic, but I will also check the chat. All right, so yeah, the return is this Friday. Um, mostly stuck before Dragon Horizon, but there is a question on Sub Agile, and there's also a question on Dragon um, Horizon, but it's not a big question. It's not, you just have to know what it's stable. So let me go over this table. Uh, so first we talked about um, we put this result that if you over the wheels, uh, you're diagonalizable if and only if uh, geometric equals algebraic and the sum of the uh, algebraic the whole space, okay, right? So we have this result, and for complex, uh, why did we only need the first part and not the second part? This is, why did I don't need the second part? You have to run, so I have to ask. Zoom people, do you know why we don't need the uh, summation?
Yeah, I'm not going to. Okay, good. No, no, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to see one of the other people. You clean all this time. All right. Zoom people, can you tell me why do I need the sun? Why I don't need the sun? So complex. You can use the chat if you like. Yes. Can you tell me? No. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yes, what, what was his name? What was his name? What was your name again? Oh, yeah, go ahead. What is it? Right. So, we have a geometric characteristic polynomial. Can you factor it in lambda minus lambda i to mi? And uh, FTA says that uh, uh, polynomial completely splits. So, all the roots of P are in C. So if you're n degree, you will have n um, you will have n roots. So huh? uh, fundamental theorem of algebra. C up to a multiplicity. So one. Another one is uh, the resulting proof. Uh, oh, because we won't. Okay, yes, thank you. Uh, over real or complex, uh, sub adjoint is the same as diagonalizable with a non zero matrix. Okay. Uh, one point that gets forgotten is that you need this to go from left to right, uh, because there are matrices that are diagonalizable, but are not self-adjoint. And I will do an example in two seconds. Uh, same thing for normal, uh, diagonalizable if you're only normal. But again, you need all the normal bases. So the matrices are diagonalizable with non orthonormal. So if you compute the uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors, you can diagonalize it. And but the problem is uh, these two vectors here are not orthonormal. Okay, so minus one dotted with one, two uh, is um, one, right? Okay, I'll do it. Minus one times one plus one times two is equal to two minus one, which is one. So it's not zero. So they're, they're not looking around. No, it's not even orthogonal. No, it's not. Oh, it doesn't matter. You can have written orthogonal. It doesn't matter. You can just divide by the norm. All what? 
or orthogonal basis are orthogonal basis yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, right. So, VI is perp to VK, and uh, the norm of VI is one. Okay. So, this is all we got uh, in the last two or three weeks. Um, okay. So, if you have a question, please let me know. Uh, Yes. So the minor one one the one for like why is the vector of the transformation? Of this matrix, yeah. Oh well it's ambiguous. Is it like order? Like minus one the diagonal value of the minus one one and then two the diagonal value? Ah uh, yes, otherwise it doesn't work. You have to match column, first column, first diagonal value, second. Let's so over C, we prove the following result that you can always find the orthonormal basis or basis so that uh, T of that basis can be written as eigenvalues and stuff. For the next two weeks, we will extend it to uh, matrices of this form. So mainly, uh, it will be blocks. That's why it's called Jordan block. So you will have stuff like, you know, lambda one, lambda two, uh, lambda three zero, and so on. So any ones and zeros, any ones will be right on top of the diagonal, and the rest will all be zero. Okay, so it's very localized. Think of like a band, it's like a band of stuff, and then zero. Okay, that's Jordan block here. Then we will prove it over C for any linear map, and we will also prove it over R, even uh, this summability condition. So that's why this summability is very important. Um, it shows up all over the place. So we have this condition that summation of MI. Yeah, yeah. So if you have this, you end uh, using this, you will get uh, up to triangle. Uh, even though you will not have, so this is over reals. Uh, even though you don't, you might have that. Geometric is strictly less than uh, algebraic. Okay. Yes. We already did the complex case. Now we have to do the real case. Uh, and we will need an object called invariant subspaces. You start with the map and the subspace in V, then you call W invariant if or stable if you can map W inside W. So the picture is is W and here's the is V and then and here's W again and then it sends it inside. That's uh, called the invariant because you stay within the space. Uh, I mean, this was up in, this is from physics. Uh, meaning you, you stay localized in some region. So local optimizer. You don't escape your local minimum. Yeah, so this was up in many places. And one of the reasons is because eigen spaces are invariant subspace. They are the canonical example. So, uh, because if you give me a vector in the space W, then I have the 
uh, TV is still in the space W. So more formally, T of E lambda is inside E lambda. It's in fact equal. So that's T invariance. That's one example. Um, let's do another one. Take V to be polynomials. Your map to be the derivative map. And, and then take W to be uh, nth degree polynomial. Uh, can someone tell me why W is T invariance? Yes. <laughs> of what degree? Yeah, so here we're using that if P is in uh, Pn, then P prime is in Pn minus one, which is inside Pn. So indeed, T of uh, Pn is inside uh, Pn. Notation for the course, why don't we know what subset and the little down underneath? That just means it could be, right? Like we're not saying. Yeah, yeah, we don't know. Yeah, it means you have, but you have to prove them because you're saying that they can never be like in your homework for the important. Yeah, so in your homework for the important maps, you have to prove not equal. Yeah. So it's extra. Uh, how about this guy? Is W invariant for this? You can do like this. And this uh, you can nod your head up down like this. No, right? Okay, thank you. Okay, we found a way to communicate. All right, good. So, uh, right, because if P is in Pn, X of Pn is in Pn plus one. And uh, so T of Pn has no relation uh, with uh, Pn. With PN because you could have been sent to another one. So one is not containing the other. They only overlap. So they only overlap. All right, here's some results you are free to use. Uh, if you is T invariant and invertible, then it's also T inverse invariant. And let me prove it. So, uh, what are we saying? Yeah, we're saying T of U gets mapped uh, inside U. And then, what the camera is doing? And then, um, the same is same for this. So, wait, 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 no, wait. Um, so this is a tricky one. So you have this. But since your guy is invertible, you can in fact say that they're equal. Now, I mean, if you can tell me why, that would be easy. If you know, if you can guess. Yes. Right. So, um, yeah. So, since you have this result, um, you can consider the restricted map. T restricted W, and this guy call it S, sends W to W. But uh, exactly, so you have D of U is D of image of T restricted W plus dimension of the kernel of uh, T restricted W. But this guy is zero because you're invertible. And so you can. You get this, which is just this. You get that they're 
the image dimension and the dim view they're equal. So they're the same substance. And from here, we just take inverses. So indeed, um, U is T inverse invariant. Happy, beautiful. Um, another nice one is that if you use T invariant, the orthogonal complement is T star invariant. So the proof is easier than you think. So let me do it. Um, so what do I have to prove to you? I have to prove. Um, let's see. Yeah, I have to prove that T star of U perp is inside u perp. Okay. Uh, in other words, I have to prove that if you take w in t star u perp, then uh, w v or u is zero when uh, u is in u. Okay. So th these are the same thing. And then let me move here. But then what does that mean? It means that W being in T star U means W is equal to T star V, some V in U perf, right? So you have T star V, U, let me do it the other way. Uh, U, T star V, and then what do I do? You do with your hand, I do it like this. But then I know that uh, I know that TU is inside U. So how can I finish from here to get zero? Just to see if all the implications and yeah, yeah. Okay, so because T U is in U and V is in U perp. So, okay. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you can use this result now, free. You can find a crazy way, please let me know. Zoom people? Okay. What else? All right. <clears throat> so let's prove that criterion. Uh, namely, uh, this is really for F equal to R. That's what we're thinking of. Because for complex, we did it last week. So you take your map, you take your basis, and we'll show that uh, T is upper triangular, if and only if uh, each of these subspaces is T invariant. Okay, so W, TWI is inside WI. So I'm going to put that down. And because we're going to use this later, all you're trying to find is a chain. W1 to WK, where each of them is T in there. If you do this, you get upper triangular. Okay, so we're going to use this all the time for the next three weeks. There's variations of this. And you already saw it with your plot map. So we'll come back to your plot next week. So all this stuff will get recycled. All right, so let's prove this. Um, I think this is the easier one. So assume upper triangular, then we have this. So why is that? Let me explain. So we need to TB1. So you have lambda one, lambda n and stuff. And this is TB. So 
it's upper triangular. But then what are the columns? The columns are uh, TB1, TBM, right? These are the columns. And you can see that this guy is TB1 equal to lambda 1 V1, TB2 equal to lambda uh, some stuff, whatever that stuff is. Let me call it A12. Uh, over here, B1, and then A22, uh, B2. Okay, and so on. So each time we're just adding one more term. So that means, in other words, if you evaluate BK uh, on the right, you will always have BK being the last one. There's no BK plus one. So that's the same as being upper triangular. Okay, zoom. And then, uh, yeah, how do you finish from here? How do you show that uh, these WIs are T invariant? Uh, so this guy here is in WK, right? And then, um, right, so you have TB1. So now, okay, I have to prove to you that TWK is inside WK. That's what I have to do. But give me any X in WK. You can write it as summation from M1 to K from uh, CM uh, BM, okay? So step one. But then uh, take TX. This is CM TBM. And you do it as follows. So you have C1 TB1, TK TBK. This guy is inside W1, which is inside WK. The next guy is inside W2, which is inside WK. And this guy is in WK. But then WK is a subspace. So this whole thing, uh, so, so the whole thing is in WK. Okay, is that okay? All right, so that gave you this direction, namely that these subspaces are T invariant if you're upper triangular. But then if you start the other way, suppose you're T invariant, that means what? So if you take one of these BKs in WK, then you have TBKs in WK, which is the span of these guys. So there exists some um, A1I, so that TPK is equal to this summation. Okay, because you're in the span of them. Professor, I have a question. Yes. Um, aren't all transformations with the same domain and codomain, like the transformation invariant? So I, I did an example, right? Remember the, uh, I did TP equal to XP and take P to be in PM. Uh, then TP is equal, is in PM plus one, which contains PM. So, so W equal to PM is not a uh, T invariant. Oh, right, yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. All right, so that's the question. Okay, all right. Um, what did we prove? Right, right, right. So again, we need to remind what we just talked about. 
In order to have that realizable over the reals, you need the second condition. Okay? So you need the second over complex, you only need this guy, but here you need both. Uh, only this. And F equals C. Okay? So it turns out the same thing will work here. So uh, take an FT space. Take F to be really the uh, reals. That's what we're thinking, but it works for general. Then T is upper triangular. So I wrote this as well, as you will see in the book. So T is upper triangular, if and only if uh, the characteristic polynomial has dim B roots in the field F. So let me write this in different ways. You will also see the language PT splits um, over F. And you will also see the one I just wrote, summation of MI is equal to dim B. And they're just telling you that, okay, let me write another way, that this guy is P of lambda lambda I, where lambda I is in F. Okay, these are all the same. All right, let's prove it. Yeah, so when the field is complex, uh, the uh, this assumption uh, is trivially true by FTA. Um, so you need this result, this assumption, uh, because again, when you take the reals, there are matrices that have no real eigenvalues. So in other words, uh, PM does not split uh, over F. Okay, so it does not have thin B roots on the field that it has none. Uh, the eigenvalues of this guy are plus minus i, which are not in the reals. Okay. Uh, but you can still, uh, yeah, but over C, you have a diag uh, you can have diagonal equivalent. Okay. So this is what we proved, speckle term, uh, because I did this last week. And yeah, M, M star is equal to M star M. It's a normal operator. If you add twice, you get the idea. Because the rotation by, remember pi over two, and then go to that. All right, let's go. Oh, I do another Thank you. Um, so, Okay. Oh, I, I see. So you take this matrix, and I will show you that. So this is not upper triangular because you have this eight at the bottom, but I will I will show that it can be upper triangular. And the reason it can be is because the characteristic polynomial completely splits, right? So V is R three. So you have uh, two plus one equal three, summation of multiplicities. Okay? So you have your condition in the in diagonal variable. Um, so that implies that uh, A can be written as uh, upper triangular. Okay? So, right? So let's do that. First, you find the eigenvalues, so one and seven. Then you find the eigenvectors, so I'm not going to do that because it's two by two. It'll take a while. Uh, so you only have two um, two eigenvectors. So let me ask you. I think I asked the question. So is it uh, is it eigenvalues? Why not? Can you, yes.
So here we have dimension of E1 is one, which is triple less than M, uh, which is triple less than two, which is L1. Okay. okay. So no. But you are right, but it, it splits over the reals and then the result we can approve shows that there exists another vector. I found it explicitly. And I formed the columns and all that stuff. Um, and indeed, I get that you can go from A to uh, an upper triangular representation. Uh, or what we call Jordan block. Because you see it's in the Jordan block form. You want more stuff above the diagonal. Okay. No, I found this. Uh, I can, so you basically have to find uh, the orthogonal complement to be one to two. No, 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 because this is a. Uh, well, actually, you might. I mean, it's not a tricky one because you have two vectors and you use the dot product. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay, let me see what do I want to say. Uh, I mean, okay, I'm gonna show it in the proof. How we might as well, uh, we might as well because right, in this case, yeah, you need more formula and. Um, what else do you need? Yeah, it's basically like I can get them. So, um, yeah, I mean, we'll go for it. Because we make a concrete choice. Right, so we need the first lemma. Um, let's see. Yeah, so uh, if W is T invariant, then you have the, the determinant of T restricted W minus lambda I divides uh, determinant of uh, T minus lambda I. Okay, so I'm gonna prove that as polynomials, like Euclidean division, meaning you can write, I mean, I'm gonna do it directly right now. So you start with, uh, Pt, you take a basis for W and you extend it to the one for V. And then, um, what was I right, so we proved that uh, W pin T invariant is the same as um, the matrix TW of B uh, is upper triangular. Okay. Yeah, so uh, it means that so the first columns here are. Uh, T minus lambda I evaluated at W1 all the way to uh, WK. These are the first K columns. And the N minus K are the rest. So you just evaluate WK plus one to uh, uh, WN. So now let me ask you, uh, uh, what does the determinant formula tell you? So let me write it like this. This A B. So this is equal to what determinant? Is this this line? Yes. 
What is the contractual expansion of time? Well, I mean, I mean, you, okay. What do you think it equals to? Huh? So, so what? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, whenever you look at this matrices, you should think of two by two. It's the same thing. So, this would be determinant of t minus lambda i uh, bw times determinant of b matrix minus determinant of a times determinant of zero. So, this guy is out. So, you're left with uh, this two. Okay, so that shows that PT is equal to P restricted W times some matrix P. So one divides the other. Okay. Zoom report. Right. So that's from lemma. Is another lemma. This seems a little bit weird, but uh, you will see why we need this in the proof. So, here, this is how the book organizes it. So, I want to follow the book like this since we're going to read the book. Okay, again, so PT splits, that's what this means. So, if you want to think of reals, just think of PT being the product of reals. And take W to be T invariant. Then we're going to show the following technical result that uh, you can find some element X so that X plus W is T invariant. So T of X plus W will be inside X plus W. Okay. So let me explain a little bit why we need this. Uh, later on, we need to build an induction, uh, a chain. W2 all the way to uh, WN. And all this will do is we will start with W1 and then we will build W2 out of X1, W1. And then we will build W3 uh, like this. So we will keep adding one element at a time and we just need to show that there is an extra element. Right? That's all what's happening. We just need to build this chain one vector at a time. And if you want more concrete, this next side just add the Okay, this will just be the adding vectors of uh, P. So, again, let me repeat we have this guy's T invariant. We will prove that there exists X so that X plus W is also T invariant. Okay. So take a basis composed of the one for W and the one for its complement. W complement, if you haven't seen it, let me write it. So WC uh, is just all the elements V and V such that uh, V is not in W. Okay. All right. So going back to what we just did two seconds ago, um, since W is T invariant, you can split your matrix into this uh, representation. So you have a matrix and then you have two blocks, okay, A and B. Right. 
So let's look at what happens. There's more information here. It's just called an AD, but uh, you know a lot more than that. So let's see what we know. And we have to use a little bit of machinery uh, called projections. So I will use projections to rewrite this matrix. Let's do that. So PW, okay. Um, this guy takes an element in V into W. Um, yeah, I want to write you the base, the representation. Uh, even though, because you might see it. So this is uh, V, BK, uh, BK squared, and BK. Uh, M, and BK of the normal. Okay, that's the formula for projection. Um, another relation you might see, so please uh, re review it. Uh, P, PW is equal to P. Uh, so please go review that. Uh, that's also very important. Okay. All right, so we use this projection to understand this uh, second uh, part of the matrix. Um, once you have the projection of the W, you have the projection of the complement. Or if you like orthogonal complement. What do I say? Yeah, so we did this map, and this map is interesting because, in a sense, is, is W complement invariant. Okay, so let me explain why. Uh, so you take W complement, but this is some guy in V, right? So nobody cares about that. But then this guy maps all the V stuff to, um, to W per. So let me do it this way. And then uh, IPW takes you to some W per. Okay. So in a way, Anyway, so that's what we're using. We're using that no matter what the input is of the projection of input, it always maps into the complement. Right? So you take any uh, V, it always maps to W complement. Or V and V. Okay? So namely take V to be TW per. It doesn't matter. But we just need this invariance. Why do we need it? Because then um, you have that this block matrix at the bottom would be um, upper triangle. So, so because uh, S W perp is inside W perp, we have that this guy is upper triangle. And the stuff is just up. Okay. All right, and okay, that's good. So what's the punchline here? Yeah, so let me write the implication. So the implication from here is uh, PT, this is PT, is equal to the thing we just talked before. So you have uh, P, T restricted W and then uh, P of S. So you have this nice clean formula. And we can use that P of S is a product of diagonal entries. So, yeah, one step at a time. This is a long proof. All right. Our guy splits. So, and we have this formula. Uh, so since it splits, what can you say about PT? Just to see if you remember the definition. What does it mean? Splitting. What does that mean? Is that? Yeah. 
It means you can write it as uh, lambda minus lambda i for lambda i in F. All right, and then mean that it's just lambda x and b. So since we have them to be in the field, there is at least one, and that's the choice we're gonna make. Okay, so we said there is just an x, so we just take the eigenvector 14. Simple choice possible. So again, we have um, t x is equal to lambda or uh, what number is in there? Oh, I see, see. Okay, yeah, this is a little bit tricky. So let me explain. So again, we have PT lambda, uh, call it lambda star for a second. So we have lambda minus lambda star to some M and some polynomial. But we just showed that this is also PT lambda restricted to W and times PS. Um, so here's the, uh, the chicken. Okay. We just said that you have Euclidean division for blocks. So that means you have PS lambda is equal to, um, you know, PT uh, divided by PTW. In other words, you have, this is a product of lambda minus lambda K for K1 to M, okay? So um, let me put all the lemmas together again. I wanna show you that since uh, PT splits, the same is true for PS. That's what I wanna prove. Okay. We just put the lemma that PT uh, restricted divides PT. So by previous lemma, uh, we have the PS divided by PTW is equal to some other polynomial, which we can still factor because you don't put PT in. Okay, so this is from the previous lemma. I cannot do this unless I know that the thing divides the top. Otherwise, I'm dividing by like one over x squared and stuff like that. So that's why I'm using the previous lemma. Okay. Um, but then, yeah, that shows that PS splits has only uh, f roots. Okay. So, okay, so let me finish this. Um, actually, yeah, let me just finish. So that means S has an eigenvector with real eigenvalues. Okay, and this kind was S. So you have this is equal to this. And I just rearrange this so you get Tx is equal to lambda x p w x. Okay. All right. And right. So let me finish. So how to show from here that if you take V in the span of these two, you have that uh, T of V is also in the span. So how do you show that? based on this. Any guesses? Yeah, okay, let me, because okay, we're, we're all over time, so I just, I'll do it. So V is equal to uh, Cx plus Y, uh, Y is in W. So you have Tv is equal to Ctx, 
uh, plus uh, ty. And we just showed that this is equal to C lambda x plus PWx plus ty. This guy uh, is in W plus span x. All this. So it's in here, right? But then um, W is T in there. So this is also in W. So you get that the whole thing is in here. Uh, no, you don't need guarantees in the uh, complement because they might not be, uh, yeah, they might not be orthogonal. Like, they, they might not be, uh, the, they might have overlaps, the i minus p. Um, because, um, So, I mean, you, you, you will see this. There's a thing called orthogonal projection and projection. Orthogonal projection is when you use the basis, uh, orthonormal basis. Uh, uh, projection is when you just use basis. So when you just, so remember that I wrote summation in a dot in a product. No, 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 uh, so any basis. Yeah, that's called a projection. But we haven't really done it. So it's only for this proof. So, uh, but, uh, but, but it's good to go review at least this P square equal P relation. Please go review it. Yes. Uh, Thank you, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In what? Like we have to uh, write. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 